crypto corals are adapting to the changing climate. Some would call them sellouts. I call them survivors. For more on octo corals, take a look at this segment. Not only are coral reefs pretty to look at, they provide sea life with shelter and food, act as a natural buffer that protects the shore from waves and storms, and are even the source of new medicines that can treat cancer, arthritis, and Alzheimer's. But as waters warm due to climate change, coral reefs around the world are in danger. Hard corals are struggling, while soft corals are thriving. And scientists like Dr. Tamar Goulet are trying to find out exactly why. My job is incredibly rewarding. I'm discovering new things, and those new things can affect what we know about the world and how we can potentially improve what we're doing with the world. So I'm making a difference, and every day I feel like I'm contributing. Today, Dr. Goulet is at the Moat Marine Laboratory in Summerland, Key, Florida. Assisted by grad student Savannah Drought, she's going to show us how she's learning the secrets of a soft coral known as octocoral. In the Caribbean, what you see primarily are octocorals, and those are corals that sway with the current. Some people may think that they're even algae or plants, but they're not. They're animals, and they have algae within them. Both hard corals and octocorals have a symbiotic relationship with algae. Symbiosis is the living together of two organisms from two different species. It's sort of like if you had a roommate and both of you benefited from that relationship. The algae produce sugar with photosynthesis and the octocoral feeds off of that. And the coral provides the algae with nitrogen from their waste. And it also provides a protective home for the algae. By studying this relationship, Dr. Goulet hopes to find out why the soft coral species, Briarium asbestinum, is thriving, while hard coral species are dying. With special permission by the government, Dr. Goulet and Savannah are capturing the adult octocorals by carefully removing them from rocks where they live. And by using these syringes, they're collecting the octocoral babies, or larvae, and the seawater around them. Once their collection is complete, it's time to head back to the Moat Marine Laboratory for the next step in their research, isolating the algae from the adult octocoral. To isolate the algae, Dr. Goulet grinds the coral sample, which releases the algae into the water. She adds this liquid to a centrifuge, which quickly rotates the sample, separating the heavier algae to the bottom of the tube. She pours out the unneeded liquid at the top, adds more water, and repeats the process two more times, resulting in highly concentrated algae. Algae that's key to studying how octocorals grow and develop. If they can figure out how the algae helps the encrusting corals, they might be able to save the branching corals by giving that algae to them. Coral reefs are considered the rainforests of the sea. They do a lot. And we don't know yet what will happen if we let the reefs deteriorate further. So I hope to find out the secrets of octocorals. And through that, I am hoping that we can understand how to save our reefs. Hey, it's Miranda Cosgrove, your favorite host of Mission Unstoppable. I'm the only host. And if you wanna watch awesome STEM videos and exclusive Mission Unstoppable clips, just make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell.